audience edition of Hannity. Now, last night on this program, we had a heated Hannity debate between Brigitte Gabriel and Saba Ahmad about the danger of radical Islam. Here's part two of their epic showdown. If she is truly a moderate Muslim, she needs to stand up for women's rights. She needs to stand up for of those who I beat women, who rights. kill and women, well. who maim women, who genitally mutilate women. She needs to stand up and speak out about the kidnapping of the girls uh, by Boko Haram that you are not speaking for. You I'm... are taking your place while you have access to the media and you are here obviously because of your deception and lies and what you did at the Heritage Foundation so you can point the light to the issue of the Islamic. And Thank you so much for bringing that out. Use that opportunity to speak about where are the girls that were kidnapped by your own co-religionists. As a Muslim woman, right. it is people like you who needs to stand up. Ms. Ahmed, we'll give you the last been, word. I have been speaking out against Boko Haram kidnappings. We have been. And I just want to clarify one point. You mentioned about me being friends with the convicted terrorist. I've never even met him. I saw him once at the court. And that, the, I was a Muslim community spokesperson in Oregon. And obviously, the, a mosque burned down right after his arrest. So we were suffering a lot oh, of hate please. crimes. Oh, please. Oh, so please. Don't, There's plenty of information that people can easily find on Google by just typing your name. Well, I'm telling you the truth about, from my side. I'm, well, I'm sure I there are a lot of people that say a lot of You things. and the word truth need to be in the same sentence, Saba. Let's be very clear about this. Well, I, I think you're misguided, and I think you're the ones who needs to hear the I'm truth from Muslims. I'm very clear, and I don't mince words, How many and Muslims I don't beat do around know? the bush, and I know my facts. All right, do you know it? We'll do you know any Muslims? <laughs> yes, I do. A yeah. lot. Remember, I was born and raised in the Middle East. I know. I wrote about you. I, you're I'm Noor very, Salman. I, I'm very familiar I, with your writing. How many right. Muslim friends do you have here in the U.S.? I do have friends here in the U.S. I'd but like that's to beside talk to the them. point. That is who, beside who the point. Who is your... That's beside no, the point. Not, As a patriotic American, I use the opportunity that I have to shine the light about how American I can too. protect my fellow American citizens. Because well, I am an American, American first citizen and well. my loyalty is for this country. And anything happens to any American, I'm the first person to stand up, I'm defend an them, fight for them. You are not. Your loyalty is somewhere else. It's my, about time we see more patriotism from the Muslim community and less terrorism. Bridget, I'm an American and I'd like you to defend me. I defend people who are worth defending. I don't defend liars and deceivers. I defend patriots who love this country and are willing to put their lives on the line to protect it. Me you are not. Your loyalties are to defend a terrorist who wanted to blow up a Christmas tree lighting in Oregon and kill many Americans. Shame on you. Bridget, every defense lawyer has to defend somebody, okay? I don't think you've studied criminal law you too well. You are an but activist. Anyways, you are far more yeah, than just I a am, defense lawyer. You are an activist about the with shady national security and shady character. Let's take the gloves off and speak the truth, Saba. This okay, time, you you're dealing with we Brigitte Gabriel. Politely. You're not dealing with somebody timid that you can manipulate and, and talk over. Not this time, to, Saba. People you like see? you need to be put in their place. This is America. Oh, we love our country and we will fight for our country and protect her from people exactly like you and expose God. people exactly like you. Wow, Bridget, yes. you just sound very, very angry. No, I think I'm you need some reality passionate. check. I'm not I angry. Do, I did want to make angry a point. Is something Ramadan's completely coming different. up, so please do visit a local mosque wherever you live. I hope you get to meet a few other Muslims besides me and learn some, I, meet I some peaceful Muslims. I have a lot Muslims. of outstanding, wonderful Muslim friends. Good, so go are talk very to them. much different than you. Okay, well, uh, but I'd love to meet you too. Let's meet up here. Uh, you know, I think we need to talk to each other without screaming. And we hope we're not to screaming. We are talking passionately. No, now That's you're very calming different. down. But from from the beginning, you were very very loud, and I don't know what was going on. But now you're starting to calm down. Because which is good. I don't allow liars to speak over me. Because I put the truth How out. Dare you I will not liar. let you go unchallenged. <laughs> You are so mean. Did, ever, did mean? someone ever tell you? you children? I'm a terrorism analyst, darling. I debate you. You're a lawyer. How? Meanness has nothing to do with logic. We're having a Bridget. logical, factual conversation. So you let's are leave the little girl me. play that you're Girl. trying to pull aside. I'm a businesswoman. I don't play like that. I know. That. I can see you're a businesswoman and you're using your whatever twisted logic to get, make profits off of Muslims. No, I'm not making profits I don't think that's Muslims fair. Whatsoever. I think you need to Stop As it. a matter of fact, no. I'm, a, no, no, no. I'm here. I'm not getting paid a dime.
A lot I feel of people privileged. Have been, I have the opportunity to set the record lost. straight. Bridget, there are liars like you trying to put the lies out. Bridget, a lot of lives have been lost since 9/11 because Correct. of these fear tactics. No, we need to a lot stop of this. lives were lost. I'm so sick and tired of it because must... of people like you are not standing up to the radicals I and stopping them in their up. tracks. That's You're not exactly standing up. You are defending there. a convicted terrorist. You no, socialize no. with them. Uh, don't, don't play games, Saba. We are on national television. It's about time the Muslim community stands up, stop the lies, stop the political I know. correctness, need to stop and it. start calling a spade a spade. And that's why I want you to get your facts straight. I'm telling My you exactly facts what are very straight. All right, guys, we're no, going to we're gonna have to leave it there. Thank right. you both for uh, being with us. Appreciate it. And coming up, while all eyes are on the terrorist takeover of Iraq, should we be worried here at home? Coming up next, details on a chilling threat made by the leader of ISIS directed at the residents of New York City. How should America respond? We'll check in with our studio audience next. They'll react to that and much more as our Hannity investigation, Radical Muslims on the March, continues. Give you actually a quick five minute um, important lesson about Islam in order for you to understand clearly what this conflict, what, what we're dealing with, and what the outcome. Um, the Sunnis and the Shiites have been fighting for a thousand years. The Shiites are the descendants of Prophet Muhammad, and they believe they are the rightful heirs uh, to lead the Islamic world because they are the blood relatives of Muhammad. The Sunnis were the advisors of Muhammad who do not come from his bloodline, but because they feel they were more qualified to lead the Islamic Ummah after Prophet Muhammad died, that's why they led. Um, and this is why you see this rift between the two of them. But in order for you to understand a little bit about, and I'm gonna stand up so you all can see me about this, this is very important. I'm gonna give you a little bit of history about Islam. Islam, Prophet Muhammad got his revelation in the early 600s. Uh, from the angel Gabriel who told him that he was supposed to be the last of the prophet. Muhammad tried to preach in his own city of Mecca, trying to recruit people into his own religion, and failed for 12 years. He could not recruit anybody except for his immediate family and friends. So he decided if I go to Medina, which was the Jewish hub at the time, the Jewish commercial center of Arabia. If I go to the Jews and appeal to them and if they accept me, that will give me credibility in front of my own people. So Prophet Muhammad, to make his religion more palpable to the Jews, borrowed a lot from the Old Testament, from the Bible. And this is why you see a lot of similarities between the Bible and, and the Quran. This is why you see Jews don't eat pigs, Muslims don't eat pigs. Jews pray a few times a day, Muslims pray a few times a day. Uh, Jews wash their hands before prayers, Muslims wash their hands before prayers. Jews fast for Yom Kippur, Muslims fast for Ramadan. So Muhammad put all that into the Bible, called them the people of the book and all of that, and went to Medina trying to appeal to them. When the Jews refused to accept him, that's when Muhammad turned against them and became a military warrior and started killing them and massacring them. He made the Christians and the Jews second-class citizen or Dibi. They either converted to Islam or paid the jizya or the protection tax or died. So when you see ISIS today in Iraq asking people to either pay the jizya, convert or die, and then they behead them, ISIS is not doing anything that Prophet Muhammad himself did not do. So Christians and Jews became a second class citizen under Islam, under Muhammad. Christians and Jews could not pray publicly, could not build churches, could not blow, Jews could not blow the shofar, Christians could not ring the church bells. And they started conquering and went all the way into Jerusalem. By 1090, the Pope in Rome told the Christians, how could you sit idly by and see what's happening to your brethren in Jerusalem? That's why the Crusaders were launched. The Crusaders were launched to liberate Jerusalem. They were able to go liberate Jerusalem for less than 100 years before Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi captured the city back, Saladin. And Jerusalem remained under Islamic control until 1967 when the State of Israel liberated Jerusalem and where Christians, Jews, and Muslims were able to pray under the same sky. Islam continued to spread. They went out of Arabia, they went all the way to central China, they went to India, they went into central Europe, and as they conquered nations, only the Christians and the Jews were able, were allowed to stay alive if they paid the jizya or the protection tax. 
All others were massacred and beheaded. Islam killed 217 million Hindus. This is why the Hindus and the Sikhs have such history with Islam. Islam uh, looked at Jews and Christians as dhimmi and they gave them identifying clothing so they can identify them as they walk down the street. The yellow star is an Islamic invention for the Jews, not a Nazi invention. The yellow star was invented in Iraq in the 9th century by Khalif al mutawakkil the second Khalif of Iraq, to identify the Jews as they walked down the street. But because the Nazis and the Muslims worked together very closely, the Nazis borrowed the practice from Islam. All you men sitting wearing a belt, this is called a zunnar. That's what the Muslims invented for the Christians in the 9th century, to identify them as they walk down the streets. Jews had the yellow star, Christians had the belt or the zunnar. Islam continued to grow. At one point, Islam covered more of the Earth's surface than the Roman Empire did at its peak. Between the 1600s and the 1800s, the Europeans were experiencing the European Industrial Revolution. This is when they